Brett Wood Higman and Aaron McKittrick know something about Alaska and the issues surrounding oil extraction. The couple recently completed a 4,000-mile, year-long expedition along the west coast of North America to explore environmental issues. They traveled only by human-powered means, hiking, pack rafting, and skiing, from Seattle to Alaska's Aleutian chain. When they weren't in survival mode, Aaron, who has a master's degree in molecular biology, and Hig, with a PhD in geology, spent time discussing all sides of the oil issue. Hig grew up in Sodovia, Alaska, and during their journey, he and Aaron met and talked with many other Alaskan locals and heard firsthand how oil drilling decisions might affect them. In this phone interview conducted from Unimac Island a few days before their journey's end, Aaron and Higgs share their unique perspectives on the complex issues surrounding oil drilling in Alaska. As you listen to them, enjoy the untamed majesty of Alaska for yourself through Aaron and Higgs' photos and videos. Just before we started this trip, I happened to get involved with a little group in Seattle that was putting together an educational event on the idea of peak oil, the idea that at some point the rate at which the supply of oil will diverge, will become very different from the demand, and that will be compensated by rapidly increasing prices. In the process of this, I just did a little research. You know, I, I was like, okay, I'd like to learn a little more about this, and read some of the papers, and, and I was really shocked to read those papers and realize that we have no idea what's going on. The level at which we understand the relationship, this critical commodity that the whole world uses, is appallingly low. Wow, that's academically a concern. Anyway, moving on, we're going to do this cool trip. We take off, like, I think that, if I remember the prices right, the barrel of oil has nearly doubled just during our trip. One of the things that's been interesting is I think the oil prices haven't so much changed the environmental calculations as they have just put on, you know, high speed, everybody thinking about all these things. It's interesting to see that obviously there's people who are going to want to scramble to drill for every last drop of oil they can. There's leases planned for um, the North Aleutian Basin just in the Bering Sea just outside of where we are now. But it almost makes me think even taking aside considering whether each of these possible drilling operations is going to be an unacceptable risk to the fish and to the birds. There's really what we need to do is rapidly get off oil. Like this is not, our use of oil isn't sustainable. It's, it's actually most hard felt actually in some of the little villages out here where the oil prices are a lot higher than they are in most of the lower 48. And many of them have no source of power other than diesel generators for electricity and it, they're basically in crisis mode. They're like, okay, we need to get off the diesel generator now or we're going broke and the village will cease to exist. And so they're scrambling to try to figure out their way to get through the red tape to put up wind or looking for wind turbines or looking for geothermal or as much conservation as they can manage, you know, anything. Yeah, we, we went through the town of Perryville, just two towns back, and they were at the point where they needed to figure out alternative energy solutions that would work for the village within a matter of months, or people would be turning off the lights. There would just be no power in the village, and uh, people would just basically be forced to leave. Because they're looking at, at prices for electricity that are probably 10 times or more what most people are paying in the cities. A lot of people think that there's plenty of oil and that the prices are being artificially increased. And, Hig, if I understood what you said, you said that we really don't know. Yeah, so there were a couple things that surprised me. One, one was just that it's hard to figure out the basic variables. In particular, we don't know how much oil we have, and this comes from... We don't know how much is in places like Saudi Arabia. Yeah, it comes from a combination mm -hmm. of some oil companies exaggerating how much oil they have and some doing the opposite. They exaggerate in both directions, basically. And so we don't know how much those hmm. effects are. We're just left not understanding. The other thing, though, that surprised me, our model for how um, oil will decrease or how it will peak and then start decreasing are based on, as far as I could tell, some, some oversimplifications. Basically, we're looking at what happened. Say you look at American oil, like the oil within the 50 states of America, you can look at how much was supplied through time, and it follows this vaguely bell-shaped curve. All that's been done is they just apply that bell curve on a larger scale to the world oil supply. 
So if we run out of oil in the U.S. and there's still plenty of oil elsewhere, we just buy it elsewhere. It's not too big a deal. You produce oil at a rate that's essentially not It's a world market. It's a world market. Yeah, okay. You start running out on a world scale, it's a completely different matter because you then have price feeding back directly with that supply. And so you can get very strange reactions, and we don't know what will happen. Not knowing something so fundamental it seems really worrisome to me. You would think that the models would be quite sophisticated on something that's pretty fundamental to the way we all live now. I'm not at all an expert in this, and I felt like I sat down and read what were pretty recent papers, and I was like, wow, I could do something better than this, and I don't know what I'm doing. Given the confusion on the world supply and the world usage, do you both of you have an opinion on the oil exploration in Alaska? I would have hesitate to give an opinion on any one project without knowing more about it. Mm-hmm. I would say mostly it's a step in the wrong direction for a few reasons. One is that basically drilling more oil, and this is true globally, not just in Alaska, neither solves the short-term problem of people are struggling with oil prices because it doesn't come online for a long time, nor does it solve the long-term problem, which is that we don't really have enough oil in the world to continue our oil-guzzling way of life, Mm -hmm. and we need to move to other fuel sources. Mm -hmm. It's not long-term productive in that way, and of course it has local economic benefits to the state and to the communities nearby. You, you kind of also have to balance for that potential environmental impacts with oil spills are huge. I mean, we went through Prince William Sound and there are still a few things that haven't completely recovered from the oil spill in 89. As far as environmental impact, oil spills are huge. They're more preventable than some of the problems with some of the other industries. Mm-hmm. So it could potentially be better than something, certainly better than other mineral extraction, better than logging, because you could theoretically drill for oil and leave less of an impact on the landscape. However, the risks of those spills are pretty big and the track record's not great. Mm -hmm. Also, just it being kind of the wrong direction for the world. Gotcha. The way I kind of try to break it up when I want to step back and look at the big picture is there are a lot of possible futures out there, and you talk to different people, and they see very different futures. Some of them are very dark for what the world will be like in 50 years. Will it be a complete economic collapse? Will it be a world of imperial domination? Like, there are all kinds of very different ideas of the future, and some are also very bright, like a future where we have a sense of community, both on local scale and on a global scale, that we use sustainable technology where we're not going to be rushing headlong into a resource crunch again. And what I try to do for myself is to look out there and try to say, okay, I mean, I'm not nearly smart enough to figure all this out, but there are bright futures out there. And what's my best guess at how we might aim towards those? Mm -hmm. And drilling for oil doesn't particularly aim us more towards those. I think that there are places and times when it's appropriate to drill for more oil. It's a valuable resource and it can help people's lives better. Um, But you have to be really careful. And I really am very concerned about some of the potential for oil spills. But it's not a big scale solution. It's merely a piece of the economy. Big scale solutions, we start talking about sustainable energy sources, especially with all the concerns right now with global climate change, because any fossil fuel is just going to make essentially our carbon debt um, worse. And the more we use fossil fuels, the more hurriedly we do that, the less we conserve and change our technology before we drill for more oil, the more those climate change issues will grow. And so in that sense, if you were just to throw a ballot in front of me, say, vote for or against this oil drilling project, I'd probably check the no box. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of complexities in there, and I, I wouldn't want to say I'm just flat out against any oil development ever under any circumstances. For more information on Aaron McKittrick and Hig Higman's environmental expeditions, visit their website at groundtruthtrekking.org.